Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, and I'm back again with another video. This time I'm doing a 2018 in review and 2019 goals spread, themed after Ariana Grande's Thank You Next lyric video. So I'm very excited to do the spread today, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get right into the video. So I found some photos from the lyric video with that purpley pink color and then dragged that into Photoshop, selected the color and just made the entire page that color so I could print it out and have a bunch of this pinky purple paper to write on. I pre-drew out the spread so I had a bit of an idea of what I was doing. So I just measured the pink paper against what I'd drawn to get generally the right size strips and then started writing. So my interpretation of this is basically to write every number and letter in a different style font. So you really get that kind of scrapbooked look that she has in that lyric video. So I didn't plan it too much ahead of time. I didn't exactly follow what I'd written in pencil on the page. I just kind of wrote each letter and number as I went in a way I thought would look interesting and different enough from the one before it and after it. I wanted to write thank you next at the bottom of this page so that we're saying, okay, this is what happened. We're accepting what happened. Thank you for what happened in 2018. I am showing gratitude, but I am so ready for next year. Thank you, next. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to worry too much when you're gluing them down about making them perfectly straight or even. It actually looks better if they're a little offset, not quite perfectly straight, not perfectly spaced. So it makes it a lot more relaxing for me because I don't have to worry so much about everything being perfect. I decided to do all of the headers, all of the parts I was doing on the pink paper from the start, just so that that would be done and I could move on with the rest of the spreads. So I'm moving on to the header for the 2019 goals page. And again, doing the exact same thing, but trying to come up with even more types of letters and more different fonts. If you're having trouble coming up with fonts, you can always go on something like Creative Market or a free font website and just browse through their fonts and when you find one you like click on it and see how they've written different letters and numbers and use that as inspiration each time. I personally just try to come up with things out of my brain <laughs> but you can totally look up inspiration if you're having trouble. If you're looking for a jumping off point to find some websites that have fonts or just in general to look at different types of fonts, you can check out my Pinterest. I have a graphic design Pinterest board that has a lot of different types of fonts that I like on it. So that might be a good starting point for you. And just gluing that down. Now we're moving on to a couple more pieces that I'm gonna be writing out like this. I will let you know what these are for in a moment when we get to the 2019 goals page, but don't worry about it for now. All right, so now that I have all of these little pink bits finished, I'm going to start actually writing out the spread. So starting with 2018, I wanted to have a bunch of different categories and write out two things for each so that I could have a pretty good snapshot of the year. So the categories I wanted to stick with were gratitude, lessons, wins, memories, health, love, career, finance, social, and fun. So for gratitude, my two top points of gratitude for 2018, what I'm most grateful for in the year, number one is my family, definitely my family. And number one, number one is Jason. I come back later and add especially Jason to the end of this because he is my family. He's my best friend. And he really got me through 2018, which was less than an ideal year for me. So thank you so much to Jason for being there for me. Um, I have a wonderful family and a wonderful husband, and that is what I am most grateful for. And of course, I'm including my cats in my family. They are my children. They make me laugh and smile every single day. So grateful for them. The next thing I'm most grateful for in 2018 is my plant-based bride family. That is all of you. So many more of you came to join my little kind of weird, kind of nerdy part of the internet this past year, and I'm so glad that you're here. You are such wonderful people, and really give me so much love and support and you're so kind in the comments and I just I just am so grateful for you so thank you. Moving on to my top two lessons of the year. Number one, I have to put my mental health first. This is something I knew at the start of the year and somehow halfway through I lost sight of and I really stopped prioritizing my mental health and it did a big number on me. So I really need to take that lesson from 2018 and not repeat it. I think I sometimes go through these phases where I feel like it's not fair that I have to prioritize my mental health so much and that I should be able to just live my life and not worry about it. 
I don't even know if that's an accurate representation of what it's like to be neurotypical. You can let me know in the comments if you don't struggle with your mental health. Do you have to worry about your mental health? Do you still practice self-care regularly? What's it like for you? I'm really curious because I have always struggled with depression and anxiety. And as a lot of you probably know, I previously had an eating disorder. Mental health has always been something that has been a big part of my life and something I have to consider um, and really prioritize. So I think I sometimes get a bit resentful that that is the state of my life and the state of my brain, but it is what it is. And I really just have to be an adult about it and prioritize my mental health. My next biggest lesson is that I have to follow my heart and trust my instincts. There were some things I knew at the start of the year that I didn't take action on until the very end of the year. I just wasn't willing to trust my instincts and follow my heart. And I really need to stop doing that because we have such a short time on this planet and I'm not willing to waste it ignoring what my heart is telling me to do. So that is something that I'm taking into 2019, a big lesson. Moving on to something a little more positive, the wins of the year, my number two biggest wins. Number one, I made a big scary decision. This relates to following my heart and trusting my instincts. I finally made a big decision I probably should have made at the start of last year. And I'm not gonna talk about that yet, but I'm very relieved and glad that I finally made that big choice. And then my second biggest win of the year is that we hit 23,000 subscribers on this channel, which is just nuts to me. That is so many people. I'm pretty much in shock every time I consider how many people that actually is. So thank you so much for being here. We had so much growth on this channel in 2018 and it shocks me to no end, but I'm so grateful and appreciative. Moving on to memories, my favorite memories of the year. The first one was Jason's birthday month and our actual birthday date that I took him on. Um, I ended up giving Jason a present every single day of the month leading up to his birthday. Some of them were tiny, don't worry. I didn't buy him giant elaborate gifts every day. Some days it was a little sticker set or a mug or something um, or a card or flowers. But I love, love, love giving gifts. That was just such a memorable month for both of us. Um, I feel like I almost enjoyed it more than he did. I mean, he enjoyed getting the gifts. He enjoyed being made to feel special every day for a month, of course. Um, but it was just so much fun for me to get to show him how much I loved and appreciated him every single day for an entire month. And as much as it's not always possible to maybe do something that extravagant. I suggest for those of you out there who have a significant other, maybe try doing like a birthday week or something and just plan something cute and fun and specific to your partner every single day of the week leading up to their birthday or something. It's just such a fun, wonderful thing to do. And that month really sticks out in my mind as one of the best of the year. My next favorite memory of the year was Halloween. We dressed up as Commander Riker and Deanna Troy from Next Generation. As all of you know, we are very nerdy. We love Star Trek. We love sci-fi in general. So that was a really fun time making those costumes and getting dressed up. We dressed up our cats as well. They had little uniforms. If you want to see pictures, go check out my Instagram. Um, but that was just so much fun. So now on to a couple more categories. I won't go into detail on everything, otherwise this video would go on forever. So my health, um, unfortunately wasn't a great year for health for me. My anxiety became more severe and a back injury and a leg injury that I sustained a little while ago um, kind of came back with full force and really stalled my dancing which was a big part of me having less than a great year so that I couldn't do. One of my greatest loves in the world, which is dance, um, because my injuries were getting in the way. For love, we had improved communication and understanding this year, which was really wonderful. Jason and I have always been pretty comfortable talking honestly with each other, but we worked even more on improving our communication this year, and it made a really big difference for us. We also had lots of quality cuddling time this year, which was wonderful for me because physical touch is one of my top love languages. So cuddling for me is a wonderful, wonderful way for me to feel loved. 
Moving on to career, I got a promotion at my day job. I actually also got offered another promotion, which I ended up declining, but it was really wonderful to be recognized for my hard work at my day job. Another amazing thing in my career this year is that we grew by almost 16,000 subscribers in a single year, which I know I've mentioned this already twice in this video, but I am in shock. On to finances, I worked really hard this year to make more money, but I also struggled with sticking to a budget. For social, I struggled with social anxiety pretty severely this year and I ended up withdrawing from my friends. So it wasn't a great year for my social life, for my friendships, and that's something that I'm hoping to change in 2019. And the last category for 2018 is fun. I started reading fiction again, which I used to be such a voracious reader of fiction and then for a few years there, all I really read was nonfiction, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but I kind of lost that spark and that passion for reading and finding fiction again, jumping back into imaginary worlds was really awesome this year. So I want to keep doing that. I want to keep reading fiction. If you have recommendations for any incredible works of fiction that you enjoy, regardless of the genre, please let me know in the comments. I would love to create a reading list for myself for 2019, and I'd be happy to share it with all of you if you're interested. And the very last thing for 2018 for fun is I tried watercolor for the first time and I really loved it and it's become a medium I really enjoy. So I'm glad that I took the leap and bought some watercolors and gave it a try. So that is my 2018, less than an ideal year, unfortunately. I've tried to find a little bit of a silver lining, but I'm definitely ready to say thank you next. Moving on to my 2019 goals. The first thing I wanted to establish for 2019 was a word of the year. I don't think I've done this before, but I kind of wanted to find a word that I could cling to through 2019 that would help me to remember how I'm trying to approach this year. And I read a bunch of lists of words and really brainstormed. And the word that stuck with me the most was conquer. I want 2019 to be the year that I conquer my fears and my insecurities. I want 2019 to be the year that I conquer my bad habits and take my life back. Because as any of you know who struggle with anxiety and depression or any mental illness really, um, it can feel like your life is being taken away from you by your mental illness and I want to conquer it back for myself this year. So. Conquer is the word I chose. It's a little more aggressive than the words I was first considering, but I think I need a little more of an aggressive approach this year. Next, I wanted to set a focus for the year, the one thing that I really wanted to make a priority. And for me this year, that is my mental and physical health. I need to make my health a priority. So much of the rest of my life depends on how my mental health and my physical health are doing. And unfortunately, I kind of neglected both this year, especially towards the end of this year. So that is something that I really, really want to focus on in 2019. So now I'm moving down to my goals for the year and I'm sticking with those same categories from my 2018 in review. So I'm looking at health, love, career, finance, social, and fun. So for health, my first thing is I really want to work on reducing my anxiety. I'm going to make more of a detailed plan of how I'm going to do this in the future, but I wanted to kind of put that intention out there for myself that it's a priority to really work on reducing it because my anxiety got a little out of hand in 2018. My next goal for health is to get back to dancing and doing yoga a lot more regularly. Um, this involves going to physio and doing my exercises, stretching on a daily basis, strengthening, and just really pushing myself to get back to the peak physical health that I had before these injuries really knocked me out. Next are my goals for love. My number one goal for 2019 is for us to finally go on our honeymoon. We got married in 2016 and we still haven't gone on our full on honeymoon. We took a little mini couple day honeymoon after our wedding um, just to another part of Ontario, but I would love for us to go on a real trip somewhere. So that's my number one goal in love for 2019. And my next goal is to prioritize romantic time and making memories with Jason. Um, we were both very busy in 2018 and as much as we spend a lot of time together, we didn't really prioritize going on romantic dates and really doing big memorable things. We spent a lot of time hanging out at home, which is great because we're both homebodies, but I do want to make sure that we're not missing out on opportunities to 
make memories together and do awesome things together, learn new things together. So that's a priority for this year. Next in career, I want to book a show and try acting in film this year. Because of my injuries, my performing career kind of took a back seat in 2018 and I want 2019 to be the year that I make my comeback. So I wanna make sure that I'm working to book another musical and potentially dabble in film, which is something I never really had an interest in. And this past year, I realized I wanted to give it a try. So we'll see what comes from that. And my next career goal is to make YouTube my day job. I would love, love, love to do YouTube as my day job to support me while I am continuing to pursue my career as a performer. And it's looking like maybe that could be possible in 2019. And that's really exciting. On to finances, I want to make a budget and stick with it. This is a big struggle for me. If any of you have recommendations for how you manage to stick to a budget, please let me know because I'm the daughter of an accountant and I still can't manage to stick to a budget. My next financial goal is to save for our honeymoon trip. I really wanna make sure that we get ahead enough that we can afford to take a nice long trip to somewhere beautiful with a bunch of history and amazing things to see and experience. For social goals, I want to make sure that I prioritize making a date with a friend every month, making sure that each month, at least once a month, I am spending the day or the evening with a friend and really reconnecting and taking that time to maintain our friendship. And my second goal is to deepen my current friendships and to make some new ones. As I said, 2018 was not a great year for me for friendships, for um, my social life. I just struggled a lot with my anxiety and ended up withdrawing from a lot of my friends. So I want 2019 to be the opposite of that. I want to make sure I'm going out and making new connections and reminding myself how important friendships really are and really connecting to my current friends who are wonderful humans and I feel like I've neglected them. And the last goals for 2019 are for fun. My first goal is to cross something off my bucket list every single month. We only live once, we have a very short period on this earth and I want to make sure that I'm making the most of it and doing things that I wanna do. I wanna make memories and learn things and explore. So I'm gonna make a bucket list. And my second goal for fun is to find time to do something I love every single day. I can be bad for this. I can be a bit of a workaholic and I can neglect doing things that I genuinely enjoy. And that's something I wanna change in 2019. I wanna make sure every single day I'm spending time doing something I love, even if it's only for five minutes. So that is it for my 2018 in review and 2019 goals. Thank you, next spread. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already joined the plant-based bride family. If you decide to do your own spread, whether it's thank you next themed or not, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you create and what your goals are for 2019. And please leave a comment below with your number one lesson or takeaway from 2018 and your number one goal or intention for 2019. Thank you so much to my patrons for your support. We have a new patron this month, Tracy. So welcome, Tracy. If you wanna become a patron, check out the link in the description down below. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye friends.